The Virginia Company refers collectively to two joint stock companies chartered under James I on 10 April 1606 with the goal of establishing settlements on the coast of North America. The companies were called the Virginia Company of London or the London Company and the Virginia Company of Plymouth or the Plymouth Company, they operated with identical charters but with differing territories. An area of overlapping territory was created within which the two companies were not permitted to establish colonies within 100 miles of each other. The Plymouth Company never fulfilled its charter, but its territory was claimed by England and became New England. The original charter by King James in 1606 did not mention a Virginia Company or a Plymouth Company, these being latter-day names applied to the enterprise. There was the Company of Knights, Gents, Merchants and Adventurers of London and the Company of Knights, Gents, Merchants and Adventurers of the City of Bristol, Exeter, and the Town of Plymouth. The eastern seaboard of America was then named Virginia from Maine to the Carolinas. Florida was under Spanish dominion. As corporations, the companies were empowered by the Crown to govern themselves, and it wasn't until dissolution of the Third Charter in 1621 that this right was conferred onto the colonies. The Virginia Company failed in 1624, but the right to self-government was not taken from the colony. The principle was thus established that a royal colony should be self-governing, and this formed the genesis of democracy in America. The Plymouth Company The Plymouth Company was permitted to establish settlements between the 38th and 45th parallels, roughly between the upper reaches of the Chesapeake Bay and the current U.S.-Canada border. On 13 August 1607, the Plymouth Company established the Popham Colony along the Kennebec River in present-day Maine. However, it was abandoned after about a year and the Plymouth Company became inactive. A successor company eventually established a permanent settlement in 1620 when the Puritans arrived in Plymouth aboard the Mayflower. The Puritans who landed at Plymouth were on their way to another location when they ran out of potable liquids, which in those days was an alcoholic brew, mead or beer, and made out of all kinds of vegetables and decided to stay. The early colonialists made alcohol beverages from, among other things, carrots, tomatoes, onions, beets, celery, squash, corn silk, dandelions, and goldenrod. The London Company By the terms of the Charter, the London Company was permitted to establish a colony of 100 miles square between the 34th and 45th parallels, approximately between Cape Fear and Long Island Sound. It also owned a large portion of Atlantic Ocean and inland Canada. On 14 May 1607, the London Company established the Jamestown Settlement about 40 miles inland along the James River, a major tributary of the Chesapeake Bay in present-day Virginia. In 1620, George Calvert asked King James I for a charter for English Catholics to add the territory of the Plymouth Company. Also in 1609, a much larger third supply mission was organized. A new purpose-built ship named the Sea Venture was rushed into service without the customary sea trials. She became flagship of a fleet of nine ships, with most of the leaders, food, and supplies aboard. Notable persons aboard the Sea Venture included Fleet Admiral George Summers, Vice Admiral Christopher Newport, the new governor for the Virginia Colony Sir Thomas Gates, future author William Strachey, and businessman John Rolfe with his pregnant wife. 
The third supply convoy encountered a hurricane which lasted three days and separated the ships from one another. The sea venture was leaking through its new caulking, and Admiral Summers had it driven aground on a reef to avoid sinking, saving 150 men and women and several dogs, but destroying their ship. The uninhabited archipelago was officially named the Summers Isles. After Admiral Summers, though it was known as Bermuda, the survivors built two smaller vessels from salvaged parts of the sea venture which they named Deliverance and Patience. Ten months later, they continued on to Jamestown, arriving at Jamestown on 23 May 1610 but leaving several men behind on the archipelago to establish possession of it. At Jamestown, they found that over 85% of the 500 colonists had perished during what became known as the Starving Time. The Sea Venture passengers had anticipated finding a thriving colony at Jamestown and had brought little food or supplies with them. The colonists at Jamestown were saved only by the timely arrival three weeks later of a supply mission headed by Thomas West, 3rd Baron de la War, better known as Lord Delaware. In 1612, the London Company's Royal Charter was officially extended to include the Summers Isles as part of the Virginia Colony. However, the Isles passed to the London Company of the Summers Isles in 1615, which had been formed by the same shareholders as the London Company. To the disappointment of its investors, the Virginia Company of London failed to discover gold or silver in Virginia. However, the company did establish trade of various types. The biggest trade breakthrough came when colonist John Rolfe introduced several sweeter strains of tobacco from the Caribbean, rather than the harsh-tasting kind native to Virginia. Rolfe's new tobacco strains led to a strong export for the London Company and other early English colonies, and helped balance a trade deficit with Spain. The first charter of the Virginia Company of London minus 1606 The first charter gave the company the authority to govern its own adventurers and servants through a ruling council in London composed of major shareholders in the enterprise. The members were nominated by the company and appointed by the king. The council in England then directed the settlers to appoint their own local council, which proved ineffective. For one thing, the council had to obtain approval from London for expenditures and laws. This charter also limited the enterprise to 100 square miles. Topic the Second Charter of the Virginia Company of London minus 1609 The Second Charter expanded the area of the enterprise from sea to sea. And because the local governing council proved ineffective a governor was appointed. This Governor Thomas West, 3rd Baron de la War known as Lord Delaware set sail aboard the Swan in 1610. The Governor was, in essence, delegated absolute power by the King to act as he saw fit. The Third Charter of the Virginia Company of London 1612 The Third Charter expanded territory eastward to include islands like Bermuda. And it includes a long list of adventurers and planters. An adventurer apparently being a description of a shareholder, and a planter being an emigrant. The Great Charter 
On November 18, 1618 the two major officers of the Virginia Company, Sir Thomas Smythe and Sir Edwin Sandys sent to Sir George Yardley the newly appointed Governor of Virginia, a set of instructions that are often referred to as the Great Charter, though it was not issued by the King. This charter gave the colony self-governance, which led to the establishment of a Council of State, appointed by the E-Governor and an elected General Assembly House of Burgesses, and provided that the colony would no longer be financed by shares, but by the commodity which had established itself as profitable, tobacco. It can be safely said, that the representative form of government of the United States of America had its birth with that charter. On 24 July 1621 the Treasurer, Council and Company of Adventurers and Planters for the Virginia Company of London, passed an ordinance and constitution that codified the instructions sent in 1619. This ordinance officially created a self-governing council that is the most enduring and important acts in the history of America. Topic: <laughs> Dissolution. The Jamestown massacre which devastated that colony in 1622 brought on unfavorable attention, particularly from King James I who had originally chartered the company. There was a period of debate in Britain between company officers who wished to guard the original charter, and those who wanted the company to be disbanded. In 1624, the king dissolved the company and made Virginia a royal colony. <inaudible> Heraldry The armorials of the "'Virginian Merchants' were, argent, a cross gules, between four escutcheons, each regally crowned proper, the first escutcheon in the Dexter Chief, the arms of France and England, quarterly, the second in the Sinister Chief, the arms of Scotland, the third the arms of Ireland, the fourth as the first. The crest was, on a wreath of the colours, a maiden queen cooed below the shoulders proper, her hair dishevelled of the last, vested and crowned with an eastern crown or the supporters were, two men in complete armour, with their visors open, on their helmets three ostrich feathers argent, each charged on the breast with a cross throughout gules, and each holding a lance proper in his exterior hand. The Latin motto was, End at Virginia Quartum Quintum. Behold, Virginia gives a fourth fifth dominion. Recognizing the colony's status alongside the king's other three four dominions of England, Ireland, Scotland, and France a heraldic fiction, and the Kingdom of Great Britain after the Acts of Union 1707. See also List of trading companies